welcome. Uh, I'll let David uh, do his introduction, but um, we first hooked up with these guys maybe like five, I don't even remember, five years ago ish, something, like something like that. Something like that. Obviously, so we, we've seen the levy failures and all that kind of stuff we've talked about, what's been going on. Um, this is a great example of what David uh, has done and is doing. Um, to try to uh, materially help the situation right here in the lower ninth and to move things forward. And it, a lot of stuff that we talk about in our classes is about um, you know, helping folks, recovering folks, all that kind of stuff. But also, um, as we've been talking about, when we have a disaster, you can just you know, put the chair back on the porch or you can make a better chair, right? So one of the things he's also trying to work on is, is making more resilient communities, right? Making sure we have uh, ways to to empower folks, not just bring them back to whatever the level was before, but let's get to a more stable, um, more uh, joyous and supportive um, um, life uh, out here. So, um, yeah, so I'll let David tell, tell his story. Okay. Well, I came to New Orleans in 2009 as a volunteer to help rebuild houses and soon realized there was a greater need than just a physical structure. So I founded Capstone, and through the years we've evolved where we try to address food security issues. Uh, the Lower Ninth Ward is a food desert, which means you have a low-income population with not always good transportation, and access to reasonably affordable food is a distance away. From here, you would go that way into St. Bernard Parish, about three miles to Walmart, or you would go this way a couple miles into the city. And when you're looking at 35% of the population doesn't have a vehicle, either walking or biking or taking the limited public transportation, you don't often have the opportunity to stock up on groceries for more than a day or two at a time. We, you've probably seen many of our corner stores. Um, those are full of unhealthy options. Doritos. Oh. And the like. If you go up here, they've got two full rows of just potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> um, lots of alcohol available. Um, if you can find a whole gallon of milk as opposed to just a half a gallon, it's going to be probably six and a half dollars. So you're paying quite a bit more for what food you can buy. Um, when I was in the corner store the other day, the limit of fresh fruit was six bananas on a basket by the door. I think a 50 cents or a dollar a piece. A dollar, a dollar per banana. Per banana. Not bunch, per where banana. Where you can buy them for 69 cents at a high price elsewhere for a pound. So, um, with Capstone, we've taken blighted and vacant lots, cleaned them up, and started doing gardening of various types. Uh, through the years, we've rehabbed about 40 different lots. We're currently operating on 10, and we've got about 80 fruit and citrus trees in the Lower Ninth Ward we've put in the ground. We've as of last week, we've got 10 new blueberry bushes oh, in. Cool. Oh, cool. Um, we do aquaculture, which is, if you're not familiar with that, is raising fish and plants and recirculating the same water. And it's soilless, and we use about 75% less water than we would to do in ground. Because all we're having to provide is what the plants actually need, as well as evaporation losses. Um, we've got about a 1,500 gallon water capture system for rainwater off the roof. Uh, let's see, we've mentioned the goats, chickens, I've got a tortoise. His oh, a tortoise Dan. now. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, we're, since I had started to slow down a couple of years ago between cancer and COVID, some of the other nonprofits have stepped it up a little bit and started different food pantries and that type of thing. Cool. And they've also been sending some volunteers at time. But one of the things that's still in process is we're going to be 
hosting one of the community <laughs> bridges over here. I don't know if the community is here. Well, those are basically people from the community cook and put prepared foods in the refrigerators for anyone to come and go and cool. Cool. take some and leave some. And, cool. Um, so they've got to finish leveling up the little shed and get the refrigerators put in place and then that'll be up and running. And nice. I think right now throughout New Orleans there's maybe 12 of those around. Oh cool. I didn't know about that. There you go. Yeah. So when did those start? Uh, during Katrina or during COVID. COVID. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had many different initiatives that came into place during COVID to help people out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had World Kitchen here right, right, and right, right. then a group of about 60 restaurants all went together and started doing prepared meals and the purpose was to feed the community but also to keep their employees hired right right right, right. keep them give them something to do income yeah cool so what we're gonna have you guys work on today is a couple of different projects and one is doing some weeding around the house <laughs> it's kind of gotten out of hand and there's only one or two things in that mess to save, and I'll show you what those are. <laughs> and then the other is down on this far corner. You can probably see the white boxes that are beehives. Oh, well, that's the other Oh, beehives, we've got to save honey, honey, honey. Yeah. About honey. We have beehives, and we sell pet mineral honey, except right now it's in the off season, and we've sold out our previous harvest, and numbers are down because it's been a horrible two years for bees. So, um, don't have any honey right now. So, how many hives, right now, how many hives do you guys have? Right now, I'm down to six. Oh, that's all? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'll okay. be adding another 10 here by mid-April. Okay. But um, at one point in time, I was up to 70. Wow. Um, that's very so, good. Um, but anyways, on the other side of those beehives, you can maybe see the edge of it where there's some brown soil there. That's where we've planted the blueberries. It's in... Um, wood compost that's been aging for about five years <laughs> which uh, I've told is just perfect makeup for blueberries cool. Cool. and I've got some black plastic in here we're going to take that down and kind of lay it out in between the blueberries to solarize kind of thing. solarize because um, the group that came the week before we planted just took out a ton of weeds that grew in there so hopefully we can keep the weeds down under control. Cool. And we've got a wheelbarrow over here. And on this side, we've got some busted up cement bricks that we'll take and use those to hold the plastic down. Okay. And I was kind of thinking that we could have half your group work on the weeding and half sure. the work working on preventing weeds. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. So. So let's do it. So uh, take a quick uh, five minutes. If you guys want to grab your, not five minutes, a quick two minutes.